Space is the place. So, you want to get to space, huh? Have you tried rockets? Rockets use fuel and engines to create thrust that propels them forward. When a fuel tank is empty, it is dropped to stay as lightweight as possible, allowing the rocket to go even faster. These tanks, as well as other expendable parts of a rocket, are called stages. Different stages do different things. Often the first stage is very powerful, with just enough fuel to get it out of the atmosphere. The second stage usually has a low thrust engine that, while not as powerful, is more fuel efficient. After dropping the heavier first stage and leaving the atmosphere, the second stage engine pushes the much lighter craft to orbital speed. On a flight to space, the final stage parachutes back down to the surface, ideally in one piece. Missing the ground. If you want to visit space for more than a couple of minutes, well, you'll need to get to orbit. An object is in orbit when it's moving sideways so quickly that even as gravity pulls it downwards, it keeps missing the ground. As long as the object isn't slowed down by anything, it goes around the same path around the body it's orbiting. Forever. If that object is a Kerbal, however, it's recommended you bring lots of snacks. So, since your goal is to move horizontally at a high speed, why not launch sideways? Well, on Kerbin, the atmosphere is like a thick soup. You'll waste a lot of fuel trying to fly through it horizontally. By launching vertically, you cut through the thickest part of the atmosphere as quick as possible. Most orbital rockets start tilting towards the horizon soon after they leave the launch pad. This maneuver, called a gravity turn, uses the planet's gravity to turn the ship, and it reduces the amount of fuel needed for a stable orbit. When launching near the equator, your gravity turns should point toward the east, since your craft gets a free boost from the planet's rotation. Thanks, planet! Once your craft is moving quickly enough so that its arc brings it above the atmosphere, it shuts down its engines and coasts to space, and once it nears the top of that arc, the craft needs to fire the engines a second time to keep it from falling back down. Doing this correctly turns your orbit into a nice big ring, and with that, congratulations! You've missed the ground. Orbits are weird. Remember that orbiting baseball? What if you wanted to make its orbit higher? Well, it's a baseball, so grab a bat and try to hit the ball into a higher orbit. Your first thought may be to try and deflect the ball upwards, but unfortunately, doing this bends your orbit, so it hits the ground before it can return to you. What you need to do is hit the ball in the direction it's already moving, adding to its already high velocity. Now that you've sped the ball up, why isn't it getting any higher? It's just whizzing by at the same height it always did. After all, I did say it'd make your orbit higher. What gives? Well, the ball is actually going higher. That is, on the opposite side of the planet you're standing on. You've raised your orbit and learned the first lesson of orbital maneuvering. Your actions affect the opposite side of your orbit. Weird, huh? So your ball is moving faster, but it's passing you at the same height. How do you get its orbit higher on this side of the planet? Now that you know how changes in velocity affect the height of your orbit, you've got all you need. By adding velocity to the ball at the highest part of its orbit, you raise the lowest point in your orbit and make it circular again. Orbital transfers. 
As you know, the faster you go, the higher your orbit gets. And if you get fast enough, your orbit may even cross into another celestial body's path, like a moon or planet. The closest celestial body to Kerbin is the Mun. And if you're looking for somewhere else to try and fly a rocket, the Mun is a good choice. The real trick to getting there is timing your departure so that the Mun captures your vehicle at its highest point. If you mistime your departure, you may miss the Mun entirely, which creates a lot of paperwork. So let's assume you've left at the right time and the Mun is there to meet you. As your craft reaches the Mun, it enters a zone in which its gravity has more influence over you than Kerbin. This zone is called the Mun's sphere of influence and you've had to go very quickly to escape Kerbin's gravity. Much too fast, in fact, for the Mun's low gravity to capture you. If you don't slow down, you'll fly past the Mun and be flung further into space. Remember what I said about paperwork? Once you're in the Mun's gravity well, the best way to slow down is to fire your engines backwards until your trajectory becomes a nice stable orbit. And now, you're a Moon of the Mun.